So now I'm going to take a minute and I think I'm going to, maybe I'm going to show a pattern or show a design on him instead of just have him be all brown. So I'm going to take the pencil and erase some of those guidelines that I had on his body. And I think I'm going to do a design like this. And you can use and do whatever design you like. Maybe you have one in mind. I'm going to kind of do a, a beadwork or a quill work design. I'm just kind of trying to decide which way I want to make this design on him. Maybe I'll do a floral design on it, a flower. And do some leaves on there. I think that'll that'll do okay so now I kind of have it sketched on and I'm gonna use my marker and show a design Kind of do it the best I can. Doesn't have to be totally perfect. So whatever design you want to make on him you can do it and I like to do this sometimes just to give it more cultural idea I guess you know it's just however you want to interpret it but our people have used plants as medicine and as food and it wound up being seen on things like our clothing I think I'll take some brown here and just, oh, maybe that's not brown. Hmm. Maybe it's purplish, color in that part of the design. Now that I did that, Kind of got to keep going with it. I have a bunch of different colors. And I'll take a second and 
put some different ones in this in this design. Use some bright colors on the flower. Like this. Show some real bright colors also on the leaves. But these kind of designs were done a long time ago, like on moccasins, for instance, or they'd be doing these on bags, for instance, purses, and our people. Maybe they would take them and sell them, sell their beadwork. One of the famous places they were selling beadwork all the time was by Niagara Falls and State Fair and different places like that. Now, I'm getting a little brave with these colors. Showing some different kinds of color combinations. And uh, I think I need to find a brown to use. And maybe I'll go back to, uh, I, I guess I won't go back to that. It's pretty dark. Let's see what I got. I'm sure I can find a brownish color. But this gives you a, quite a different look of a beaver. things up a little bit and express myself I love the animals and how they look and I try to give them a little bit more character I guess you know so now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna leave a white Space around my design that will show it as it'll help it to stand out a little bit, make it look like it has a white outline of beads or something on the design. And you see how it kind of makes it pop out when I do that. Well, like I said, the Nonganyaga is one of our clan animals. It's certainly easy to understand why people would want to have the characteristics that these Nonganyagos have as animals.
because they, as I said, are hard workers. And we would want our people and our kids to be ambitious like that and have that quality. So I'm taking the time and going around my design a little bit. As I said, we eat different things now, but long, long ago we ate ate everything that we took. So if we used the nonganyagons fur, we would also eat the meat. And that's how just how it was and how it is, how it should be. Now you notice that when I'm coloring them in, I'm doing it in a way In, an, in the direction that I think his fur would be. So it gives it that look of fur. But Nonganyak, go on. He's, that's his the word for him as an animal. And we call the clan, the beaver clan, those people that are in the clan are referred to as Hudigangega. Hudigangega. Hudigangega with the Asonan beaver clan. That's what they call them. Hadiya song. They call it that. So now you see I'm getting working my way up. Coloring him in as I go. Show texture on his face. And sometimes it's just as important the spots that you leave bare as the parts that you color in. So I'm going to leave a area here that I'm not going to color and hope that it shows it like a, almost like it's sh shiny. And then go back in and show some shadow here and there, like that. But those of you that belong to Hudigangi Ga Jago, and your symbol is a is one that's important. And they also defend their places. Boy, I took a canoe one time and I went in a twin ponds and there was a big house, big area where the Hutigant Gate got, they had a big house and that was their territory, that pond. And it was getting towards dark. I thought I was going to do some night fishing. And I rigged up a lantern. And I was taking a canoe out with a lantern on it to go fishing at night. Oh, those Nonganyak, they got mad. They swam real close to my canoe. And they used that big tail and they slapped the water and they made a whistling type sound. I never heard before, but I knew what it meant. And it meant that Nong Nonganyago was telling me to get out of there. That's his place. 
Well, if I was trying to fish and I realized that pretty quick that I wasn't going to catch too much fish there with him mad. So he got his way and I left. Yeah. Let me go with a darker, a little bit darker color here. Maybe sometime you'll be lucky and maybe you've seen them out when you were out in the woods or out in fishing or something by their water. Be careful of them. You don't want to make them mad. But this is a version of this one of our clan animals, no Ganyaka. Hope you had fun. Hope you st stayed with it.